Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, grinders and tryhards, gather around your screens because it's time for another win on Sunday with the Black Knight. And this is a very special episode because in this episode you see my first attempts at climbing into the hot ring. Yes, the new hot ring racing series here, which at first glance, you might think, what is the difference between this and a regular stunt race? But let me tell you, I think I have figured it out. I've cracked the formula. I understand where they're going with this. But first, a quick note. As you're watching this video, you may notice that at times, uh, the frame rate may go completely to heck. You drop right after nothing, everything suddenly slows down, and then there might be a pause where, or a break in the action where suddenly it seems like I've teleported down the track a little bit further, and this is due to some technical difficulties I'm having with my computer. For some strange reason, Fraps is just dying on me. That's the software that I use to record the game, and it's, you'll be fine, you'll be clicking along, 60 frames per second, and then one one frame per second and what happens then is it's not just that i can't see what's going on basically the car stops and everyone shoots past me and then you know i've lost four or five positions so it's really uh, an untenable thing here by the time i i stop recording and then fire it back up again I've, I've lost so much track time it's unbelievable it's not too bad as i recall in this particular set of clips but the next couple videos that i was going to put together i mean it ends up being half fraps half rockstar editor and boy if you've ever worked with the rockstar editor i mean i have one race that it must be 100 clips and you can't add them in mass you have to go click add a clip click add a clip click add a clip so it's going to and then i have to i have to basically render that video watch it record the video itself with fraps which means i can't really do it because that doesn't even work and then edit everything together to make the video so it's gonna be a long time here i think depending on how long it takes me to figure out what's going on before uh, before we get some of these videos out i'm thinking it might be some kind of thermal problem i'm not really sure um long time uh, subscribers will note that uh, i've had this problem before and it has magically gone away i don't know what causes it um, but it could be a little while. We might be looking at a bit of a hiatus here on the channel. Might be a little while before I get another video out after this one. But that doesn't mean anything bad's happened. It's just the computer's gone on the fritz and it may be a little while. It may be a little while. But I wanted to make sure I got this video out so at least you can get my opinions and my thoughts and insights into the world of the hot ring racing before we kind of go on hiatus and work on the computer and try to... I have some other projects that I really can't take the computer offline yet and it does everything else pretty well. So I'm just gonna have to soldier on with the other things and uh, then uh, when I get a chance to actually take this thing offline for a little while, take the fans out of it, put new fans in, something, I don't know, change, put put fresh, uh, fresh uh, thermal compound on the chips. I don't know what I'm gonna have to do, take the whole thing apart, but in, in, the, in the short term to mid term, if you don't see any videos for a little while, that's what's going on. I have, I have a lot of stuff planned, but I may not have the technical feasibility to, uh, to pull that off for a little while. Now, on to the hot rings. Now, these particular tracks, what's interesting about them is that if you're looking at them at first glance, you think, well, gee, this is just another stunt race without a whole lot of jumps. There are some jumps, but no big loop-de-loops, no you know, fancy dancy, big track pieces, anything. They look more simple and, you know, more more blocky, a little more clunky, very wide, very wide tracks. Uh, the, the turns aren't particularly challenging. Some of them you can spin yourself out on. There are a few that you actually have to slow down for, but not all of them. A lot of these turns are meant to be taken at full speed and there, there's not a tremendous amount of, oh, well, here's a, the real trick is trying to get around this corner just this way you have to break just this much and you know turn in a little bit ahead of time no no that kind of thing going on really there are some places but that's not the overall theme there's even a place on i think it's the vespucci track the, the i think that's the one where you drive into this tunnel and you think to yourself man this looks like it was made with a doom editor from 1994. Not that that's a bad thing, but it's that's exactly what it reminded me of. It was a certain thing where it looked, that's, you know, now there's a lot more elevation changes going on than you could have done with any of that. But the looks of it, that's what it reminded me of. 
What I eventually came to realize is that these tracks are designed for one thing and one thing really only, and that is slipstream. The idea behind these tracks, I believe, is that this is meant to replicate essentially NASCAR restrictor plate racing. If you're, you're not going to pass people, you're not going to catch up to people unless you can use the slipstream. And if you could find somebody online willing to do this with you, where you can become like a team here, where you slipstream each other, one passes one and then the other one passes and you keep leapfrogging each other around the track, you will go far faster than everybody else. And really, you can guarantee yourself a one-two finish. You know, now who becomes one and who becomes two? Well, that gets shaken out at the end just like it does in a real NASCAR race. That's why the turns are by and large wide and easy, so that you can have multiple people doing this and, and you know passing each other and, and leapfrogging around the whole, whole way around the track. And it's it's really kind of an interesting concept. The downside of a big wide open track where the curves really aren't that difficult is that it is a haven for Bumpy McBumpmeister. Yes, folks, people, when you get on these tracks, people are slamming into each other left and right, and they're going to be slamming into you, and you're going to be flying off the, the track all over the place. It just happens. It's just, there's just too much of it. I don't understand because it, it should be pretty obvious that you could go a lot faster, but if someone passes you, hey, that's your buddy. Now you, you draft them. You get into their slipstream and you, you pass them and then they pass you and then the next thing you know, you guys are zipping together away from everybody else in the field. But it doesn't happen that way. Most of the time you go to pass somebody, immediately they turn into your door and try to wreck you. It's just, uh, well, I mean, you'll get to watch. You'll get to see all of this happening in this wonderful video that you can see here. I mean, the the main, the first time I did this, it didn't, it wasn't until about the third or, you know, maybe the third time I was really racing, uh, on these tracks, it's the third session that I figured out that the key is the slipstream, and that's what we're supposed to be doing. I mean, I was doing slipstream, I mean, obviously, you try to slipstream whenever possible, but uh, yeah, it's what really struck me was like how really everybody was turning into Bumpy McBumpmeister, it was just a lot of rage going on out there, and that's one thing you're gonna have to contend with on these tracks. Not that that's any different than any other Rockstar tracks. There's everybody's crashing into each other, but it's easier to do with this stuff. On a positive note, I have found that even if you are completely wrecked off the track, usually you can get your way all the way back to the front because everybody else is smashing into each other as well. And you can you can recover, you can recover and win the race, even if you've been crashed multiple times. It's a really interesting thing. The races themselves are fairly long. I think the minimum the minimum length is five laps, which gives you about 10 kilometers. So you have a good amount of time to recover and get yourself back into a reasonable position. If you have a good 20 cars in it, it gets very exciting and very interesting. And you have three or four cars, eh, it's really not all that impressive. You, you'll get bored with it. But if you have a good number of people in there going at it, it's, it gets, it's definitely a fun time. I mean, you, don't, you won't necessarily win. Uh, it may not end well for you, but you'll be laughing as it, it doesn't end well for you. And there'll be a lot of other people just crashing and exploding all around you. So it's definitely a worthwhile thing. It will be interesting to see if uh, this continues to be a popular thing once the double money, double RP goes away. Oh, and one critical element is you have to leave contact on because... Well, I actually lobbied, and there's, there's a, one of these videos you'll get to see it. I said, look, no, turn contact off so we can just race. And the thinking was, boy, if you could have contact turn off and then just race, you know, that would, you know, no one could wreck each other, that would be the best of all worlds. Except what I never knew, and I never noticed this, if you turn off contact, it automatically defeats the slipstream. You'll get no slipstream. And this race without slipstream is the most boring thing ever they're com that, they're completely designed for the slipstream D that drafting that you know that kind of restrictor plate racing kind of vibe where you're, you ha you need to be around somebody to go fast that is definitely the key to all of these tracks so you have to leave contact turn on which means bumpy mcbumpmeister is gonna have a field day 
As a matter of fact, you can see a lot of people just staying at a certain turn and just going back and forth, crashing into people. Because the, the one thing is that there's a, a large number of laps, but some of them are very short tracks. So if you just take a place, you can just keep wrecking people and making their day miserable, which has led to a lot of, of hosts picking the destroy the last place every lap. Because what that will do is if you're just staying behind or driving backwards or doing anything just to troll everybody, uh, yeah, you won't be there very long. So that's the, that's the first time I've ever seen a real use for that. But because of it's of the circular nature of the tracks and because people can camp and then just try and wreck people, that's actually something that comes into to play. You know, I, I wouldn't suggest every 30 seconds, but every lap, at least to get that one guy out of there, that's, uh, that's something that actually becomes a useful thing. Now, should you buy your own Hot Ring Saber? Now, that's, that's an interesting thing. Because the car itself, and I've already seen the reviews from Ruffy1322, and I'll let you see all the details on that. The car itself, really, it's, it's mostly going to be used in these races. So unless you can find a use for it outside of there, um, it's not really something you need to get. If, if the races stay popular and you really want to be competitive in these particular races then I would definitely recommend it. But if what I'm thinking is I'll, I'll spend my money, get a hot ring racer, get it fully upgraded. The event week will end. And then what happens if nobody ever does one of these races again? They're only really fun if you have 30 people or so in them. And I've been able to win with the stock stock car. It's, it's something that can't happen because you, most of your speed is really dependent on the slipstream. So it's almost not worth getting one. Um, don't get me wrong. Is there something nice about having your own NASCAR? I mean, that's, you know, it's, it's a fun thing to have. So I, I probably will get one at some point just so I can figure out what kind of cool paint job to put on it. And, you know, of course, yeah, turboed one will do better in the races, although not necessarily, it doesn't guarantee you a win. Um, so that's the sort of thing where you might want to think about holding off and seeing if this takes off as the predominant form of racing, or at least it's at least as popular as stunt racing as the transform races. And don't forget, transform races are coming up. There's going to be more of them coming out. Hopefully I'll get my computer stuff straightened out by them, but I really, I really don't see it. I have a feeling this is going to be a while before I get to take the thing apart. Might be weeks, really. So if you, if you don't see anything for weeks, the channel's not set, shut down or anything like that, or even shut down shut down shut down no none of that it's just a matter i've got i've got some computer issues to deal with here and, and and like that but here's an interesting thing what if they put hot ring racers in the transform races now that that's a real possibility and now you'll have another, it's another thing to have a use for they're not ridiculously expensive at like, what eight hundred thirty thousand or something like that but they're not cheap either so for instance, I'm probably going to not spend my money on the Hot Ring Racer. Instead, uh, there's a sale on uh, on the 20 car garages, and I get one of those for Rusty Jack here, and get his my secondary character with a, a garage. Which, by the way, that reminds me, Tylerius, aka Ty Killington, has just started a new series on his channel, featuring Rusty Rod. Which, if my cousin Sammy were watching this, he'd say, Hey, listen, man, don't let your rod get rusty. But, I mean, that's neither here nor there. And while I am certainly not suggesting that somehow Ty came up with his idea for Rusty Rod from my Rusty Jack, I just want to make it well known that Rusty Jack predates Rusty Rod. Actually goes back to a story from work where we had a system that got shipped out to a customer and the jacks, when they arrived, had rust on them. And the customer was really unhappy. Oh, we can't have these rusty jacks. All the, he must have said rusty jacks like five times in a row. And I finally said, hmm, rusty jacks, that'd be a great name for a band. And the rusty jack silence on the other end of the line. Oh, we have a comedian. Oh, well, that didn't, that didn't necessarily go well. I was told later on that some people thought it was hilarious, but this guy didn't, and no one was going to... Uh, to say no, really, that was quite funny. That they, this was not uh, this was not the time or the place, I gather. So, I have commemorated uh, this whole event by naming the character Rusty Jack. It just seems like a perfect kind of thing. The idea behind the, uh, instead of the one I was racing with is that he's just a racer, you know. His, maybe his uh, his father was a mechanic, his mom was a biker, something along those lines. I came up with the idea for the character around the time bikers came out. 
And I thought it was some kind of hybrid racing biker character sort of thing. You know, you could swap that back and forth. It just seemed like, you know, the daddy biker was the more prototypical kind of thing. And, you know, I thought, let's make it a little bit, mix it up a little bit. And, uh, of course, that really doesn't really matter. All it really is is another character that I can race with and, and dress up a little differently. The, when you're playing, you know, dress up with the characters. All right, you know, Rusty Jack gets a cowboy hat. That's just basically the difference. You know, a little bit different mustache. That's not really going as far as Ty is with his. He's really going all out with his uh, rusty rod there. And Ty usually does go all out with his rusty rod. That's, that's, how, he, that's how he rolls. Just want to get it out there, though, that I'm not ripping them off. That's pretty much all I got for you guys today. I mean, there's probably a lot more racing that's going to go on here. And, you know, we'll just turn up the volume on the racing let you guys enjoy that. I'm mostly just going to try and get this edited and up. And hopefully it renders without the computer rebooting three times while I'm trying to do it. And after that, going to be a little bit of a break. That doesn't mean that, you know... I've given up on this. I have too many hours of video just to, to put up as it were, but I still have a lot of work to do. And the computer is no longer, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Compliant. It's not, uh, it's not cooperating. No, it's, it's just, it's fighting me on this. It's seeing up. And I really can't say it owes me anything. I mean, when you consider I'm, I'm pushing 900 videos, I think at this point, that's a lot of rendering time. That's a lot of a lot of gameplay time where you're recording. You're running this thing at maximum output. I've had it for about three years now. So, I mean, we've been really pushing this machine pretty hard here. And, um, yeah, so it doesn't owe me anything. But we got to try and get, go for a little while here because I really not buying a computer anytime soon. Not going to be happening. So we'll try and get everything uh, fixed up here. And in case this is... Uh, Au revoir for a while. Uh, I really appreciate everybody watching everything on the channel. I will certainly try to return as soon as possible with fresh videos and fresh content. But if in the meantime, I, I don't want you to think I've walked away from it. We're not walking away from this. It's just that there's going to be a few things we're going to have to do here. Again, I've got some web projects I've got to do. I've got some, some stuff for, um, you know, for the Bill of Spartan Foundation that I'm involved with that I have to do. I mean, there's a whole bunch of things that have to get done. I can't take this computer offline just yet. So once I get caught up with everything, then we're going to start looking into whether we need to pull the fans out of this thing and put something else in it and do different and creative things. But on that note, folks, this is your Black Knight. Have a great night. And enjoy whatever's left of the racing.
If it's not one thing, it's another. Well, gotta run.